In this fifth grade standard for operations and algebraic thinking, fifth grade students are asked to use parentheses, brackets, and braces in numerical expressions and be able to evaluate the expressions with symbols, which means tell what it equals. They have to know the order of operations. They have to understand the order of the different brackets and braces, what to do first, second, or third. So there's a lot of sub-skills involved in this standard. I have the scale posted in my classroom, and I start from the bottom up. So when I introduce this standard, the first thing I want to do is access the background knowledge of my students from fourth grade, third grade, any levels where they understand grouping objects because that is what the braces, the brackets, and the parentheses are all about. I want to help them to know that they already know what this standard is about. They're just going to apply it in a new way. So a level one question, students know how to represent groups of objects in different ways. We're going to start very simple with pictures. So I would ask them to draw a picture to represent six groups of four, three groups of seven. If you want to give them a challenge, you could say also do four groups of six and seven groups of three. Make sure that they know uh, they can flexibly use groups and understand how they might be different or the same. Very basic. Make a picture on their paper, something they would probably have done in second or third grade. At the second level, I would ask students maybe to apply the grouping to a problem or have a little adjustment to the problem. So in fourth grade, they were asked to solve word problems involving groups and numbers, and this is setting them up to understand what steps come first and second. So a group of 37 was divided evenly into three groups. The extras were subtracted. If you think about how students will set this up in a number sentence, you want to make sure that the division is first and the subtraction is second. That seems really obvious now, but as soon as you move up to level three, where students are adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing within brackets and braces, they're going to very quickly get confused about what to do first, second, and third. So you want to remind them how to pay attention to the order of operations when it comes to multi-step problems. And this is an example. How many were in each group? How many were subtracted? So the two questions below kind of help students to remember that there's an order of operations in word problems then you're going to help them make the connection from word problems to number sentences with symbols. Let's take a look at a level three example, which is the grade level expectation for fifth grade. Eight divided by two in parentheses, so that's one group, times two and a half minus 75 hundredths in parentheses, so that's another group, inside brackets. So what do they do with that? Plus 37. How many operations are in this problem? Your students would identify that there's four different operations, all four operations, and then they'd have to think about what to do first, second, third, and fourth. So you could use this activity as a pretest for your students to see who's mastered this or has a good idea of how to do this and who is going to need a lot more instruction. Have them copy the problem on a piece of paper and find the solution. If you have time, you can go through the problem with students and experiment with the order of operations. You want to make sure they understand that doing it different ways will get them different answers, hence the importance of knowing the right order. At this point, you may have already taught students the order of operations, or you might use this problem as an introduction. Let's explore the different ways to do this problem. Hmm, how are we going to come up with all the same answer and know that it's the right answer? Well, that's what the order of operations are for. I usually have this on a separate poster in my classroom somewhere. As you practice this standard, you're going to want to take down all the extra hints and make sure students are memorizing the process on their own. Once your students have mastered the grade level standard, and not everyone will, I have an extension in level four 
where I ask students to explain situations where the parentheses are needed in an equation. And this is where they can adapt it to real life problems, make their own story problems. You can do a lot of different things in level four. It's a little fun to be flexible. And if you have gifted or advanced students, may, they may even enjoy coming up with their own problems to give to each other. Here's an example. Create a story problem that requires parentheses to solve. There must be at least three steps, meaning three operations. Show the solution. For your gifted or advanced students who've already shown mastery of level three, you could easily extend this to doing four or five operations. You could extend it to real world situations and problems. It's fun to be creative at this level. Hopefully this has given you a lot of great ideas about how to introduce the scales to your students and how to differentiate your standards for different levels of difficulty. If you'd like an assessment that's already done for you, you could assess your students on their current level of mastery and use it to plan before you even get started, which I find really helpful so I can cut out things that I don't need to do and spend more time on the lessons that they really need. Visit my website, mrsleveledlearning.com. I have a freebies tab where you can find copies of the scale, these posters, and copies of assessments with problems already done for you at all four levels. Thanks so much for your time and I hope you've gotten some great ideas. I'd love to hear your comments, criticisms, or how you use scales in your classroom. Feel free to leave a comment and have a great year.